research into the past of Gambian literature has revealed quite a bit of history in the existence of written and published literature in the Gambia. Although little research has been done into the history of oral literature, it has been discovered that the earliest literary works to be published by a Gambian were the poems of a slave woman, Phyllis Whitley, in the late 1700s. Her poems express her nostalgia for the Gambia, the beauty of her landscape, and the beauty of River Gambia. From all indications in history, these poems published in America late in the 18th century were the beginning of Gambian literature. Much of our literature is oral, is unwritten, in the form of proverbs, in the form of songs, in the form of folk tales, in the form of dirges, in the form of parables in our local languages. Uh, Madam Phyllis Whitley, who was um, captured as a slave, a young girl, in the 1740s, somewhere in present-day Gambia, um, transported to the Americas. She was lucky to have had a benevolent master and mistress who not only taught her the English language, but also allowed her to read books in their library. Um, she had a sharp mind, and in no time she became a poet of great, great, great significance. Probably due to lack of formal education at the time, no Gambian has been discovered to have published any literary work for nearly a century after Phyllis Whitley. It was not until 1875 that the silence was broken by the emergence of the newspaper in the Gambia. Now coming to the um, early 1900s, like in the 20th century, uh, the newspaper uh, continued to publish, particularly the um, Gambia Outlook of Mr. Small, the Gambia Echo, edited by Ella Ingram Peters in London, um, and Peters, you know, senior, um, the Gambia Weekly News of Mr. James Senegal, the Gambia Public Opinion of Mr. Finden Daily, and so on. Now, all these newspapers published between 1900 and 1950, also they carried some, a little amount of literature. Although the newspapers at the time, Bathurst Intelligentsia, the African Times, and Bathurst Observer did not have a dedicated literary page, they published occasionally pieces of literature written by Gambian readers. While doing the history of journalism in the Gambia, I discovered a trunk of information on Edward Francis Small a man who spoke about independence, who spoke about self-government, who spoke about dignity for the, for the African back in 1917. And nobody would talk about him. I extracted E.F. Small, watchdog of the Gambia, out of the history of the newspaper in the Gambia. Later, newspapers such as the Gambia Outlook, the Gambia Echo, and the Gambia Weekly continued to publish bits and pieces of literature, a poem here and a fable there. In the 1950s, a women's group of educated Aku ladies called the Gambia Ladies, Guild of Grace, also had some literary significance. The group was intent on holding the literary skills of young women Iconic female writers such as Hannah Mahoney and former First Lady Mrs. Jawara grew up from these associations. Some of um, the school girls who went through the Guild of Grace, um, such as I mean, I mean, Hannah Mahoney, uh, the future I mean, Mrs. Jawara, who wrote under the pen name Ramatula Kinte, uh, later emerged as a very, very important playwright um, in the Gambian literary scene. In the 1960s, William Corton, born in the Gambia but educated in Sierra Leone, published the first novel, The African, in the African Writers series. Soon afterwards, an author of the generation of other African writers such as Achebe and Suyinka emerged into the scene. In 1964, Dr. Larry Peters published his first volume of poetry in Nigeria by Mbari Publications. This was followed by other works that quickly gained him a higher reputation. There was a, an exhibition, a competition by the British Council, and I won the first prize for a short story. That was my first. In those days, one didn't think of writing as a career. Well, I'm hoping to retire from surgery soon, soon, 
Um, there are two things I want to do. I want to finish the novel, which I am rewriting. I've already written it, but I'm rewriting it. The establishment of literary magazine Danan became a milestone in the development of literature in the Gambia. Although it fell out of operation only five years later, its pages published the work of some of the biggest talented Gambian writers and exposed a whole generation of new ones. In 1971, a group of educated Gambians, Mr. Gabriel Roberts, who was also a playwright, uh, Mr. Sue Bukonache, um, a poet, uh, um, you know, and, and Mr. Peters himself, started in you know, Danan, the World of War for Champion. It was a, um, a literary magazine, you know, which came out every three months. It published poetry by Gambians, play, um, you know, drama, short stories, proverbs, and so on. And really, although it lasted only four years before it went out of circulation, I can um, describe it as the most important literary milestone in Gambian history. In the 1980s, the Barton was passed to yet another generation of writers such as Mr. Nanagri Johnson, Dr. Tijan Sala, Baba Silla, and others. Having emerged in the era of structural adjustment programs and the mass economic hardship, the themes this generation portrayed differ widely from issues of the neo-colonial state to the plight of the educated African, which greatly influenced the previous writers. I thought I'd go back to my childhood days in Newtown, in the this Newtown quarter of Banjul. What kind of stories did we tell around the, um, the little bonfire? In the evenings, we told stories about one-legged horses, we told stories about Fatu Jamana, we told stories about couscous. But then, I had grown into a system where political issues, political, the political reality was that um, Everything we did was being our lifestyle tied to the economy. One adjustment program after another. And then you wanted to react and say, well, one adjustment program, yes, World Bank, this, IMF, that, and the other. And uh, what, is my, what, is, what is my government doing on my behalf? Then I went back, all the way back to Fitzgerald Kennedy. Kennedy says, don't wait for your government to do for you. What are you doing for your country? And then I said, well, what I can do for my country is to look at that IMF situation, look at that World Bank situation, and look at retrenchment and do a story the way it has affected ordinary people in Newtown. Long and short of it, Magic Kalabash came out. Wayek and the school system in the Gambia have thought it wise to accept uh, Magic Calabash as a school text for Gabeche, grade 6, grade 7, 8, and 9. As Gambian literature evolved through the pages of its history, the gender issue that characterizes social discourse in developing countries gradually came into its purview. Now, looking at literature in the Gambia and uh, those who write or those who have been writing, we realized that, first of all, we had more of male writers. The different gender dimensions come out in uh, literature when you're looking at the male authors and the female authors. Most of the male writers would sort of come out with their characters or the male characters being superior, sort of uh, able to express themselves better than the female. Some of the female writers are coming out with very strong female characters in, in their books. And I think this really is sort of a good representation of yeah, gender in our Gambian literature. Much of my work um, really focus on women. In one of my works in particular, um, The Sun Will Soon Shine, that one looks at basically not just women in particular, but also the gender aspect of women in the Gambia as such. And this book basically looked at um, a girl who came from a very unprivileged background with no hope of making anything out of her future. She went through um, the cultural practice, FGMC, she was abused as a child and went through so many issues and yet eventually through education and um, you know a lot of awareness creation and support you know, she made it through. If you look at in Gambian 
culture, you look at the gender dimension, mostly females are not very strong when it comes to decision making and so on. But Sally has been able to use, make her female character very strong. Somebody was been able to make her own decision and at the end of the day was able to rise above the expectation of society. Gender and literature have a clear meeting point since literature depicts society which defines the gender concept that determines gender relation that prevail in the society. Gambian literature is a depiction of Gambian society, the people's way of life, their norms and beliefs, and their culture in general. Therefore, the gender patterns which prevail in the Gambian society will inevitably, almost effortlessly, be portrayed in the way Gambian writers write about Gambian society. I'm also pleased to see that there are quite a lot of women also getting into the issue of writing not just writing in particular, but also writing about women's issues. And that is something very positive to see, especially in the young. Um, I've seen quite a lot of um, young, young girls and young boys, you know, coming, getting into poetry, talking about issue of education, talking about issue of early marriage, issue of child, um, teenage pregnancy and all that stuff, you know, basically um, trying to promote the issue of rights of women. And um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that, you know, this is something that's very, very positive and something that um, we should be basically taking forward, not only in our everyday life, but also in our writing. With the recent surge in the number of female writers in the literary scene, the gender perspective is slowly evolving. The emergence of young female writers into the scene is expected to improve the gender portrayed in the Gambian literature. I started writing way back in school while in junior secondary school and it was it was really it was really um, brought to light by my teacher he really helped us and motivated us to keep writing by God's grace I've written five books Ariella um, is a first one it's a short story I write about children I believe that children regardless the right that has been given them they ought to take responsibility so that's why in my books I, I talk about their responsibilities what is expected of a child to respect our elders, to be obedient to parents, to love, to learn to forgive. And I also believe the virtues need to be nurtured. The theater, a literary platform where both gender share equal opportunity to display talent and creativity, is another aspect of literature that the Gambian literary community knows little about. Informal drama is widespread and other forms of art are performed in informal settings. But as yet, only one conventional theater, a Bunjan theater, is involved in exploring the potential of theater in young people. I think it would be a mistake to say that uh, we don't have much theatre in the Gambia. We have plenty, lots of talents around, lots of ideas around. It's just a matter of knitting it all together that I think is lacking. I can't say that you, you would say that because theatre is developed in the Gambia. We've only just started, to be quite honest with you, but the potential is great. Now, why am I on about theatre in the Gambia, why we need theatre, what does it do? Theatre in education? theatre in, in development. I think even the United Nations has seen that in a way, in a way theatre can play an, a very important role in development. If we see theatre or culture, it's, it's cultural, the dances, music, everything is part of the culture. If we see it as in a, in a way that it will help development, I think we should then push it. If it will help social development, we should push it. If it should help economic development, we should, we should pursue it. And I think invest in it. And I think the investment starts really from introducing theatre, drama, music, dance, art in the schools. These are the very same people who will become scientists, engineers, but there will be different scientists and different engineers. They will be creative engineers, creative scientists. That's what we want. Because if you look at other countries and you look at the curriculum, you will find that theater or drama, whatever you can call it, is there in their curriculum. Therefore, it's very necessary. So ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest, your champion is... Nip! Congratulations. Whoa! And your prize. Five pieces of gold? This will be my whole family for a month. Do you need some?
someone to help you spend it? I plan using the money to feed my, my brothers and sisters. Oh, you're no fun. Come on! Live a little! Let's throw a party! I'm not going to waste the money on some silly party. I'll dance every dance with you. I won't leave your side. No, Jill, forget it. I'd rather feed my family for a month than play for a day. Hmm. Would you do it for a kiss? Goodbye, Jill. Fine. Be that way. There are millions of other boys that like me. I'll go dance with them. You do that. Jill is certainly a beautiful girl, Nick. How come you don't like her? She doesn't understand how important the money is to my family. The Abujan Performing Arts Association, we decided it was time for us to have a space that we can really fine tune creativity. That's what we thought. And without, the, you, okay, you can say, well, you, they've been doing it under the trees for many years. True, you have drama under the trees all the time. But this is a different one. This is a different caliber where you really try to understand how people work, what they can do to themselves with, with, with their art, with their bodies, everything. And also, you want to inspire people. I think that's what we, we try to do, inspire people to think beyond the box, even to solve their own problems. They go to a theater, they see a show, and start them thinking. This is what we want from our people, not always just to accept what is given to us, but sometimes to question and see what we can do to improve our lives. I think that's what it is. Tell me about your mom. You have always silence about your family. Uh, she's old, goes to the river for water, to the forest for firewood. And of course, she worries over me. What else? What does she think of her educated son? <laughs> These were stuff. Wanted me to get married, have a home and children. But you know, I was shy with girls. You? Mm -hmm. Sal with girls? And you almost ate me the very day you met me in the club? <laughs> How it is that? Our dear little side land dancing and to be so bold with women, even those who are staying this way. Theatre plays an important role in social development and should be supported by both government and private enterprise. More importantly, the promotion of theatre will help increase the creativity of the people. In 1992, the contribution of the newspaper in the Gambia literature was further recognized in the establishment of Daily Observer, the first newspaper in the Gambia with a dedicated literary page. This ushered in the generation of writers that is fondly referred to as the Daily Observer generation. Such writers as Maria Makan, Baba Galle Jalo, and Hassam Sise got their first exposure through the literary page of the Daily Observer. And the advent of the Daily Observer in 1992 was also another milestone because it became the first newspaper to dedicate a literary page, okay, a poetry page. You know, you know. I myself, I can remember, you know, started publishing, you know, in this, um, you know, I mean, like Daily Observer. The advent of the internet in the 21st century has also provided another medium of publication. Already, websites such as Dr. Channa Omar Bari's GamWriters.com website have started using the internet as means to reach the worldwide audience. With all the difficulties involved in the publishing hard copy text, digital online publishing is an alternative way. Other countries have taken advantage of the benefits of the internet. You have e-libraries, you have e-books, you have tablets, you have a lot of stuff that are supposed to help people to want to read. But the problem is the internet is more overloaded with the fancy non-educational stuff than the books. So people have easy access to things like uh, movies or YouTube or short films and stuff like that more than they have access to books. So even though the internet has tried to make reading easy, it's made it hard for people in developing countries to access material. I mean, you need credit cards to read certain books, you need to pay a certain amount of money which you can't afford. So I think for me personally, the physical library can never be deleted from a developing uh, society. If you come to the library, you would see that yes, there is still a readership. 
especially during exams they would come in and read their books or study the notes that they have but unlike in the past very few people are now coming to the library to borrow books for leisure reading for enjoyment and for pleasure you see now most of our users those who come to use our facilities uh, basically get onto the internet facebook and, and and the like but the readership really especially the borrowing of books for home reading has really died down because of the new media that sort of like has this effect downward trend in the use of books the establishment of the university of the gambia has also helped the course of literature in the gambia literature cannot progress without literary critics that analyze and criticize the literary works that writers produce Although literary criticism has been going on in the Gambia, the advent of the professional literary critics such as Dr. Pierre Gomez and Dr. Charnob Bari at the University of the Gambia has elevated literary criticism to another level. I have been having issues with some writers because they would want me to write a review of their books. But when I read those books, I realize that uh, they do lack a certain standards. Or maybe the skills that I use in writing the work would have been improved then i make my recommendations on areas that need to be improved but most of the the ones who publish would not be very happy with that they would always say okay you know um, maybe you're not happy with the way i did it but i prefer doing it like this there might be acceptable freestyle but freestyle does not really have to affect the standards if freestyle affects a standard of writing then definitely that standard is a low standard the elevation of literary criticism does not only improve the quality of literary works by appreciating them, it also increases the reader's appetite and expands the readership. Because the young people are encouraged to write, the interesting thing should be to not only stop, limit some of the recommended works of Gambians as supplementary reading. Now this is going to be an appeal to the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education. If they have properly reviewed some of the works that have been forwarded by Gambians and they judge those to be com good enough as good works of arts, we can say any grade 10 and 11 student doing literature will have to read at least one or two or three Gambian writers. If that recommendation is made by the Minister of uh, Basic and Secondary Education, that would encourage um, more writers to write, but also that would encourage writers to be more careful with standard because that standard is what will be a requirement for that book to be used as a book for the syllabus. When Magic Calabash was accepted to be used at grade 7, 8 and 9, we marketed the books in certain schools. And you know what? And some headmistresses, headmasters were very happy to say, oh no, no, our students have not selected literature, so we don't do literature. So how will you know when you learn the subjunctive mood when you learn appositives, when you learn, when you want to learn misplaced adjectives, how do you learn all of those in the, in, the, in the tense grammatical environment without seeing the practice of it, all of that, in literature? The essence of literature derives from the effect it has on its audience. In other words, literature thrives on its readership. Unfortunately, the neocolonialist notion that if you want to hide something from an African, you put it in a book still holds substance in some parts of the Gambian community. Gambia, we are more of an oral tradition we have, not an informal tradition. Everything is so, if you come from that background, so uh, you don't have reading as part of you, you are not brought up to be reading. So you can see in our schools, the school system. The school systems are commercialized, but it's no emphasis on the reading. They don't have a commercial school, so the students just read just to pass the exams. Sometimes they don't even understand the questions. But you must be able to read a question so that you can conceptualize it and then be able to give a proper answer. See, that is the problem. And you can just see that some of the, sometimes the teachers themselves don't read. So if you do, the teachers don't read, so how can you, how can they uh, encourage the children to read?
and to get it from that background. So that is the problem. More than oral people, some Gambians generally prefer to watch, listen and talk than to read. The culture of reading is still weak in the country. As a result, the increase in the number of books published in the Gambia is not in correspondence with an equal expansion in the readership. You know, when I started selling books, it was, we, you have to look for Gambian material. It's very hard to get a fine one. You can find the old, old authors like um, uh, Florence Mahoney, Dr. Florence Mahoney, and then Sonko Godwin. You know, those, those are the few that you can find. But nowadays, I will tell you every week or every month, there is something written by a Gambian for Gambian market to consume and enjoy. That's a lot of that. The literature has widened up. People are writing, putting their thoughts, putting their experiences in writing. And that's a good thing, but it's not being followed by the reading public. It says, you, you, you write a book, you put it, bring it into a bookstore, that's the best market. But people don't come and buy them. You know, they can buy for their children, but they don't buy for themselves. So if the child, child don't see the father or the mother reading, that child will never read. Clearly, for the increase in volume of literature to be sustained, the readership must be expanded. The reading culture needs to be improved before a decent literary standard is established by conventional publishers. Then, it is only left to provide people with bookshops and libraries. We really have to be readers, get into the culture of reading books, not only reading books, enjoying books being able to harness the information and the knowledge and the pleasure that is in books. If we want to continue to encourage that culture of reading, then we also have to create what we call writing clubs in almost all the secondary schools. There must be a competition where kids are allowed to come and do drama, come and do poetry recitation, but also to improve the skills in reading and writing. We have to also encourage what we call dictation, we have to encourage what we call essay writing. Because these are also going to help the youth to have a mastery of the, of the language, which is the official language of the country. Against the background of the advanced literature of other West African countries like Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal and others, Gambian literature is highlighted in its youthful stage. Prestigious literary institutions such as publishing houses with professional editors and bookshops and libraries are structures that support the development of literature. Unfortunately, Gambia literature has seen little advancement in the establishment of literary structures like these. The idea to create this bookstore was born out of a conversation with my husband who is a prolific writer um, and I think it's just an extension of our normal lifestyles. Really, we just talk, we talk about writing all the time. Opening a bookstore was just another way of, you know, bringing our way of life to the Gambian public. Um, we're very happy about how it's coming up um, and the response that we're getting from the writing community has been just excellent. Everybody's given us positive feedback about how this is going to promote Gambian writing and not just writing, but creative arts in general. Gambian writers face a lot of challenges in editing, printing and publishing their work. The collective impact of these factors has not only slowed down the growth of Gambian literature, it also accounts for the low standard of some of the literary material that has been published in the Gambia. Let private business look at the growing literary community in the Gambia and invest in printing machines that will do good books. We don't have to look outside our border because we have to nurture the culture of writing and the culture of reading. I'm happy to say there has been many other uh, young enterprise entrepreneurs who have been helping young, emerging, skillful writers to write and publish their works or print out their works. His Excellency the President, uh, Sheikh Professor Alaji Dr. Yaya AJJ Jame, has been launching certain kinds of projects, um, which is encouraging because it makes people want to write. 
Uh, one of those, for example, is when he asked for writers to do a collection of his speeches, his statements. Um, from then, a lot of other people have been encouraged to even write a lot of things about him in a book form, but also to publish books of their own, such as poetry, collections of poems, short stories, and then forward it to the office of the president for the support of the president. After review is being done of those books, and recommendations are made by those who, the reviewers, that the books are good. And then these books have also been published and then brought them to the public. The Gambian literary community is blessed with strong writers who are not deterred by the challenges involved in writing and publishing. Gambian history, Gambian culture, and the lifestyle of the people have all been captured in the literary text written by Gambian writers. Still, the obstacles they face in writing for a community that knows very little about appropriate copy editing, proofreading, or conventional publishing lower both the quantity and quality of their works. We need to have experts who are expert editors, expert proofreaders, who will rigorously go through the works and then upgrade it to a standard. Uh, if that should happen, uh, it means there must be an establishment of a very effective publishing house. There must be Gambians who will be interested in learning about editing I mean, do it really as a, as a course and really come up with uh, expertise, professional and academic expertise in editing, in proofreading, etc. Simply because that is the only way we can really reach the standard we, uh, we will be hoping for. To have good works that will come out from the young, young generation that is rising up with passion for writing. Many wonderful writers in the Gambia have published good pieces of literature that have been sabotaged by grammatical and other errors. Some iconic works have been discovered to contain errors that proper editing would have spotted. The lack of publishing houses has also contributed to poor readership of Gambian literature. Some of the materials published do not go through professional editing before publication. As a result, many manuscripts that would have been reviewed by a publisher are eventually turned into books through self-publishing without ensuring a required standard. Many Gambians have been writing and publishing. Um, in almost all cases, it is self-publication, meaning that the people who are writing are actually the ones who will develop their manuscript, who will have it edited by a competent person, who will have it proofread, and who will eventually take it for printing. Um, at present in the Gambia, there is only one enterprise that is really taking up what we call the appropriate skills of copy editing, proofreading, and helping in the uh, printing and the layouts, that is Flodo Publishers. But it is still considered as part of self-publishing because Bloody publishers do not act like the publishers who will take your manuscript and take complete ownership and then do every necessary work and then at the end you receive royalties. No, that part of it has not yet existed in the Gambia. To surmount the obstacles involved in publication in the Gambia and ensure standard editing and printing for their work, some writers send their manuscripts to publishing houses abroad. Although such works have more chances to be properly edited and published with the required standard, the work will be more expensive when they eventually come out on sale. In our will to build uh, works that are reflective of Gambia, of its culture, of its art, of its people, it is fundamental not to forget that there is a standard we should maintain because our public should not be limited to the Gambia. Our public is supposed to open up to international levels. That means we need people to think much wider than the, beyond the boundaries of the Gambia when they write. That does not exclude all possibilities to be writing in Mandinka, to be writing in Fula, to be writing in Wolof, because I think these are the new skills that should be developed now, because I've seen it among the young musicians. They are very skillful in uh, you know, creating uh, works of art in Wolof and in Maninka when they are doing either rap or a cappella or whatever. But those ones, remember, is also a form of art and they can be written to. 
it can come down to what we call poetry in Wolof, poetry in uh, Mandinka, and poetry in Fula. These are supposed to be encouraged because that is what we call cultural literature. It's the core of our being, it's our identity. And we cannot really be a people that would leave any legacy in this country if we do not really promote what is ours first. Well, viewers, I do believe that uh, you are now convinced that Gambian literature exists. And Gambian writers have produced works that are of international repute and of quality. Don't waste your time now. Go to the nearest uh, library and bookshop and get a copy and read. So that next time when we see you will tell me the book that you've read because we have to change the destiny of a literary space. We have to contribute our quota to that banquet of civilization and the Gambia cannot be at the periphery. I count on you to be that agent of change for development. Mm -hmm.